Welcome back, guys. May 18th, 2018, two fresh faced young YouTubers done <laughs> <laughs> a review on Very grip size. <laughs> Actually, it's went on to be one of our most popular videos. If you top haven't 10? seen it, go back and watch it. I know, it's in the top 10. But I think the reality is most of our uh, viewers and subscribers will have seen it based on those numbers. That's Definitely. Uh, yeah, it must be top 10, maybe top 5, sneaky It might have been five. in top 5, sneaky, yeah. 143,000 views. Yeah. So we are going to review that one. We're going to review it with more technology. Yeah. Um, just a refresher. Absolutely, with more data, basically. I think yeah. we saw, and we're going to we're sort of refresh it, quad data based on, you know, simple things like launch and spin and ball flight, how those affected, and yeah. then we'll go into the super detail. The reason we're doing it the way we were doing it, we actually had the idea of just doing this as a gears video. Mm -hmm. We saw something in the gears part of the testing, which we've already done yeah. prior to even turning record on here, which we haven't done the quad testing yet. Yes. We saw some really interesting stuff that we want to just go back in now and validate it on quad, see how the numbers stack up and see if it validates what we read on gears. Exactly. And, and we think we might have some pretty interesting stuff I'm, I'm definitely excited intrigued. about it. Very much so, yeah. I'm curious to see if the ball flights match up. Okay. We all know what we the, the standard perception on grip is. If the grip is too small, you're going to hook it. If it's the right size, it'll give you the sort of best chance to have the you know, right grip pressure, the right face control, etc., etc. And if the grip is too big, you won't have control of the grip and your face uh, will be inconsistent. It will, most people think it stays open and you hit a bit of a fade. Yeah. That's the general consensus when For it comes sure. to grip size. Yep. Um, Let's, let's dive in. We have seen parts of that with you in the past, but let's, let's go on. So we've got an a yeah. undersized pure grip we have blown on. That's nice. It's better. Good looking swing. It's a goodie. Nice too. Okay, one more. Definitely a flat ball. Yeah, not bad. Okay. All right, let's whip that grip off and go put on a uh, standard A. That's nice. Very good. Clean. It's a lovely swing. Might go in. Get up. Yep. Oh, they feel good to me. That's nice. Sounded That's good. Decent, yeah. Flight looks a little different. It's definitely your best swing yeah. with this one. Hammered hit, that. Hit that one nice. Nice. Lovely. That's good. All right, Matty boy. Um, I think glad we validated on on quad. Yeah, they read slightly differently. Uh, that's fair to say. Definitely. Um, but the same conclusion can be drawn. So the reason we wanted to validate on quad was because we saw something really interesting, which to us was the spin loft was so much higher with the oversized grip. Yeah. So you know, as, as club fitters, we are always scratching for opportunities to make differences to things like spin loft, where it might be trying to, you know, especially with modern day heads being so strong True. in loft. True enough. We're trying to, you know, obviously the the, sh the head has got less loft, but if it's closing, then it has less loft through rotation. Definitely. So we want to be able to influence that as much as possible. So when we saw that, there was uh, close to 
about four, four and four and a half, nearly five degrees of difference in spin, spin loft. It's pretty significant. That's a lot. So guys, going back to spin loft, you know, remember difference between dynamic loft and angle of attack creates the plane. Uh, the more we can stretch that out, the more we can generate spin. Big in our world to be able to do that. So uh, really, really good. Um, we were really testing this because we wanted to test grip roll. Yeah, for sure. That was the main, I guess the main purpose, because yeah. that's what people think about. Big grip, hard close to rotate. Close it over, close it less, close it even less. Exactly. That's, that's ultimately what we're looking at. Grip roll uh, was measured in, in degrees here, so uh, we saw some really interesting stuff, which validates really that. It does. The least amount of grip roll, no question, with the oversize. Um, about 100 more uh, degrees more on the standard size, and then undersize was was 260 degrees more. Yeah, so a pretty lot. kind of a linear pattern there, basically. Yeah. Which again, guys, we're talking in degrees. This is this is into the weeds again, as we, we sometimes get into. But ultimately, what we're telling you is you can influence the club face by the grip size. Yes. Fitters, that's what we're telling you. You know, if, if there's fitters watching watching this and trying to sort of understand why we have a gear system, this is it right here. Oh, 100%. To, to, to understand these types of things. Path. So your path with undersized grip, because your face was closing more, yep. your path would naturally shoot out left. Right, right, right. So you would get more into out because you had a higher rate of closure. So in, in the athlete instinct in you said, oh, okay, I've got to offset this closing face mm. by pushing the center of mass, the CG, the sweet spot, left. Right. You felt like you had to do that less with the bigger grip because the face was staying more neutral. Actually, we said slightly open. And so then you would swing more neutral because the face isn't really closing as Correct. fast. So you're not reacting. You're not having to react to the rate of closure as much because that mm. cl rate of closure drops. And these are things that are happening, but you actually don't even know they're happening. No, we just kind of did it. Well, we weren't doing this test to look at path. Nope. You we, just kind of looked at it and you were like, oh, that's interesting. On, on gears, you were about 2.4 degrees closed. No, sorry. No, you, sorry. You were 3.6 degrees closed. With the smallest grip. With the smallest grip. Yep. Standard, you were open. You were just about a degree, just about a degree open. Okay. So the, the, the face was open, but the, the path was moving more left. Yep. And then all of a sudden, you, with the, uh, the path, you were basically 0 0.6 into out with a more open face. Mm. So uh, it completely changed. So it progressed. Most, mm -hmm. most closed with the small grip and yeah. most open with the That's big it. grip. Interesting. So, uh, you know, from a fitting perspective, if we go in and, and have a look at the data yeah. now. This is what I think was interesting to see why these numbers occur. Well, people will see us and they'll, they'll, they know us more for this stuff. Yeah, for sure. Right, so you guys know us for this. So we're talking speeds. So the, the club head speed went up a little, uh, the ball speed went up a little bit because the face was closing. Yep. That's going to lead to less dynamic loft, we know that. Yeah, less spin. Slightly more dynamic loft and then slightly more again. Huh. Face angle is... Uh, the most closed, look at the path difference again. Yeah, Same crazy. relationship. So most got, into out. Hmm. Yep. Then you were really good with yours, very neutral, and then you were... Same thing on angle of slightly. attack. It's same thing as we saw in gears. A little bit, a little bit steeper with the bigger grips mm. versus the, the shallow or the skinny grip. So then ball data is pretty obvious. Like if you look at why the skinny grip flew further, yep. it's because it had a lot less spin and more ball speed from essentially being Closed. Put with less loft, yeah, less loft than closed. And your club head speed accelerated more um, with that rate, you know, rate of closure. Because it's measuring the speed, right, yeah. of that so toe moving. It's 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 closing at a quicker rate. So I mean, even the even the dispersion um, summary shows a pretty obvious relationship. You've got it's kind of like right side, less right side, center or left. No, there's a lot of interesting stuff. Even like strike patterns, we saw the undersize. Maybe with the heavier swing weight of the undersized grip, mm. I was a little bit better on strike pattern, on gears. Um, that kind of stuff is maybe a little bit more grain of salt um, than the rest of it, but still yeah. a lot of patterns that, that like, you up. know, For someone who hits a low hook, I look know. at this data and go, okay, so I can retain more loft. Yeah. I can push my, I can make my path a little bit more neutral. Mm -hmm. You know, because generally speaking, the, the, the low hooker is coming from the place of, or from as a righty, coming from a place of being too much in, too out, and the face is closing too fast. Yep. That, that, there's so much rotation going on there. Mm -hmm. Whereas obviously the bigger grip, you, you know, if we're going by what we've seen here with you, we can neutralize that, uh, that path a little bit because we're able to influence the face. 
it's just the fascinating thing is how tied they are in yeah. relationship. One does as the other does. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they're not, they don't work independent of one another. They are always working together. And, and, and this, is a, this is very much a, a, a 3D thing. You know, when we're looking at, you know, face to path, that yep. relationship and spin loft, 3D spin loft. And, you know, this is, this is your D plane. This is deep in your D plane stuff right here with regards to how uh, the, the sort of spin loft is being affected. It's, it's interesting good stuff. stuff. Yep, I'm glad we saw some really clear patterns there that I think people can take a little bit more clarity as to why the grip size is changing their ball flight. Yeah, definitely, definitely taught us some, some, some really good stuff with regards to that. I think the biggest thing was how that path changed yep. because of how the face changed. Exactly. All right, guys, I mean, that's probably, I know, I, I need to look back and see what we said in the original grip video. Maybe we should have done that first, but I have a feeling it wasn't quite that in-depth. Hopefully <laughs> we're, uh, yeah, well, I mean, Gears has helped us there. Gears yeah. has, you know, really helped us dive in and, and sort of see a little bit more of what we're, you know, what we're capable of, of measuring now. Definitely. Uh, which is good. So there were, there were a couple other little things with regards to how we saw shaft deflection mm -hmm. and stuff, but we wanted to leave shaft deflection out of that as a separate thing. Uh, that's that's for another for its own series video. of videos. I know, seriously, it's not even a video. It's it was like a hundred variables, so we had to whittle them down to nine and so many. Show you some interesting stuff. It's good stuff. Yep. All Love right, it. guys. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully we're talking to someone out there. One of you guys can really relate to these issues. Think of yourself as somebody who hits blocks and hooks. If you're the the guy who hits blocks and hooks, or the girl who hits blocks and hooks, this is really for you. Mm. Someone who has massive face rotation. And, and as a consequence, we'll hold on to it as well. So that's, this is the message and going out to you, neutralizing your delivery, oversized grips, bigger grips can help. We want to do more with something like jumbo match, go to the extreme mm. uh, and, and see what that does as well. Love to do that. Okay. okay. Stay tuned for that. See you again soon.